Fuck, we are live! Hey, everybody. Hello. Dan is here. I am here. We hope that we are not echoing, but if you have problems with the audio, let us know. David is here, first in the chat. Hey, David. Hi, David. <laughs> We'll hang out at, as usual and let other folks roll in. I am excited to be rocking a green screen behind my head. So that's that's pretty amazing. Fancy Even, green screen. Yeah, we, we saw that, David. That's cool that you're working on elementals, too. What? That's so awesome. Yeah, in theory, Dan, I could actually like make this green disappear, and then my head would just be in front of Unity. <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't work also, very well. I'm, I was listening to a Twitch stream. I don't think there's an echo, so I think we're good. Awesome. Yeah. Um, David, let us know if we start getting into an audio feedback loop. But uh, it sounds like it's good, so that's very exciting. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, we should just hang out a little bit and let, let other folks roll in. I, I'm hoping that we'll see Neural and Emmy since mm -hmm. um, we did promise to talk about animation a little bit. Um, and Dan, you're watching the stream so you can see the screen yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So we've got three Fortnites at home to, to check out here. and. Uh, I have not played this at all, so we're definitely just coming to it with a totally new, uh, totally new eyes, which is super exciting. Um, and then I did actually want to pull elementals up here and check out all the stuff you changed, David. Um, I did see, uh, oh, I don't have that one open yet. Let me go ahead and run that, that Unity project while we're, while we're hanging out here. Um, I did see your big list of changes in the diversion history, so that's really exciting. That's my Unity Hub. There it is. And we will get it up running right here. Thank you, David, for hopping in and doing elementals. I'm I'm just so overjoyed that we're working on that project again. Um, yeah, I'd like to have you working on it too. And also, Dan, aren't you excited that we're doing 2D again? Oh yeah, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of 3D lately. Yeah. It's cool to do a little bit of both. Yep. They each have their little things about them. I know, I was sort of like, looking at the project and I'm like, man, it's been a while since I did 2D stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, my partner was working on a 2D game a couple weekends ago and he was trying to set the uh, tile map uh, up so he could, the tile palette, you know, so he could paint, yeah. a, paint a level. And he was having that problem where, like, sometimes the things are, like, sort of inside the squares of the tile map grid. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I remember that from last summer. <laughs> yeah, the tile map, I always forget. I always have to, like, review it. Because every time I use it again, I forget the little quirks about them. I know. And the same thing with the, <laughs> the sprite editor. Yeah. I never remember how that stupid thing yeah, there's is. There's one thing you could do to make it so you could like stretch an image without actually stretching it. And I always forget how to do that, but it's really helpful. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you have like a dialogue box or something, you could split it so that the parts that don't really, it doesn't matter if it gets stretched, like it was just a solid color, you could have it stretch that while keeping the borders all nice and not stretched out. I know but, exactly yeah. what you're talking about, and I also <laughs> forget how to do it. <laughs> I think it's, I forget what it's called, too. I think it's nine slicing. Yes! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> we talked about that like a year and a half ago. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do that all the time on these projects. Yeah, um, every time I do it, I forget. Yeah. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> yes. 
it is. It's because you cut it into like a grid like that, and then the stuff around the outside doesn't get magnified, and then you take the thing in the middle yeah. and you just stretch that out because that's just yeah. like the blank. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Nostalgia for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so I did want to tell you guys um, I, I don't know who else is there I'll see who's in the chat um, looks like we just have David for now but I, I, David I did want to let you know that um, we only have a couple more of these casts coming up so we will be casting today we're going to play some games and then on Wednesday I think um, Dan's going to do some 2D stuff like we were just talking about yeah <laughs> And then the following week, Monday, I think, is going to be our last cast. So I would love to um, do a little bit of an online showcase for these games we've been working on. And my hope would be to present um, Elementals, Three Fortnights at Home, and then... Um, unnamed Toilet Paper Game. Unnamed Toilet Paper Game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So hopefully we can make some progress on those in the next like week or so. Um, just to you know, any kind of work we want to do to debug, polish, just to make them better, mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of show them to folks as WebGL. So if we are going to do WebGL, we should probably do a little bit of troubleshooting with three Fortnites because I know uh, doing the WebGL build had caused some bugs. So. Um, I know it's not ideal to do WebGL for this game, but it's the best way in the age of the coronavirus for us to share games. <laughs> Since uh, some of our colleagues at the at Ed Alliance down there maybe are not so familiar with like taking a build and installing it, so I want to give them an, a really easy way of accessing it, which would just be to um, visit a, a, a website. So. Well, Dan, should we check out this the latest version of this game? Yeah, I'm excited to see what you added. Yeah, because every week you always add a ton. So I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> so uh, the way the audio works for this one is, um, I can hear the audio on it, but it won't play on the cast because we're we're just uh, just pulling Dan and I's voices. So you can rest assured that I am hearing any audio you added to this, and I know that's a big part of this game. Which is why people need to play it and not just see it on the cast. Um, so I'm I'm totally totally experiencing all the all the fantastic audio design, David. Uh, I'm gonna find the menu here and get this running. Let's make it big. There we go. And hopefully I can click on new game this time. Yes. Ah, much better. <laughs> and speaking of the audio design, like, I, I just, and Dan, you know what it sounds like during this part. Yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> so good. It's, so even the, vi the visuals in the main menu, they're also really good. It's very, very unsettling, and like, it, it, I don't know, I just think like some people understand how that kind of scary vibe is created, and David, you have one of those people. Right, I forget how to get past this, I'm clicking on it though. <laughs> Hopefully it'll let me through! <laughs> I want to play the game! <laughs> oh, there we go, alright, word, I'm excited. And I am playing this with a, a mouse and keyboard, and it's working fine. Um, we did indeed. Ooh. And Dad is calling. <laughs> All right, so I'm just hanging up on Dad because I know what he says. And my hunger is already ticking down here. Uh, my head's in the way of the hunger bar, but... Um, the phone app works now. Huh? You said the phone app works now. Uh, Is that the one with the, this? the phone on it? Oh my I think the bottom gosh. left one, maybe? That's... Oh my gosh! <laughs> this 
is <laughs> man every time i play this game it's like what is gonna happen now all right i'm gonna call dad let's see what happens oh wait you know what though i feel like i should order food first <gasps> wow <Yeah>. mcvomit <laughs> <laughs> you would <laughs> snowy five oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Why are they not here? Oh, I hope that they'll, they'll join so they can see this. I really, I, I love both of those guys. Sony Blue! <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, fast food world. Don't click me. <laughs> virus test? What even is it? I immediately clicked on that. Okay. Oh, okay, so I can only do one at a time. Now I'm going to call Dad. Hey friend, I forgot. Oh, that's super smart. <laughs> okay, uh, he's calling, I hear it ringing. Hi, did you forget how to get to the dark web? <laughs> you have to pay the friend $20. <laughs> the friend was like, I'm not gonna tell you how to get to the dark web unless you pay me $20. I'll go go camping. <laughs> so he basically was like all you have to do is type in wiki or type in links so you can basically <laughs> spend twenty dollars to do <laughs> that's awesome i like that yep then we have this i should have we ever clicked on the right. calendar before oh wait hang on the guy's there I think you ordered coronavirus. We got some uh, Raycast. I think I to... Oh my god! <laughs> no, I don't want that! No! <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to I'm gonna die! <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> no, help! Man, I'm trapped in the thing with the coronavirus. <laughs> Let me out! <sighs> I wonder if you had the spray, if you could shoot it. Uh, yeah, I think probably ordering spray. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, the crap! It's so scary! <laughs> oh my god, there's a coughing sound. <laughs> I died. Okay. All right. This but Dave is... said he also edited an inventory. Okay, okay, cool. Awesome. All right. So that was the short game, but I actually like the fact that I died because, like, things were happening the entire time I was playing a game. And now I'm like, oh, I don't really want to play again because, like, now I know that that can happen. So <laughs> <laughs> let's play again. <laughs> I like that. Every time I play this, it's like, I'm like, da da da. And then I'm like, ah, it's so scary. <laughs> And of course, once again, for those watching this, if you're watching later, we have a build up. All right. So I definitely want to order. What? Oh, I wish I had known that was there. Oh, <laughs> it's a ton of spray bottles. He said press L or I. I'm not sure which one that is. I. Play I for inventory. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. So I should be able to, there we go. Oh. How do I equip it? Oh, I figured it out. <laughs> Excellent. And then, uh, there we go. I had to use a little ammo to, uh, um, bring my cursor back but that's okay uh, that's a, it has kind of a funny uh location it, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, it's like we i'm an invisible person it's okay though if i were you david i would maybe attach this to the camera just so that it's like locked at the bottom of the viewport but let's order some stuff so i did actually i guess this <laughs> why i got the coronavirus <laughs> i ordered from this uh 
Let the order yeah, begin. <laughs> it was like, don't order me, and then I died. So, like, I mean, <laughs> come on, Natalie. <laughs> Let's get a milkshake. Uh, cool. Okay, so I've got my spray. And <gasps> what is that? Everything in this game is scary. Okay. Oh. Hamburger. Oh. <laughs> it's a pink, a pink hamburger. Oh, I think that has to do with the dark web. I forgot about that. Well, I just shot it. Okay. Cool. So, let's close this. Okay, <laughs> I remember that. And then we have a. Uh, I remember buying that one. Oh my gosh, I have way less money. Last time it said I had nine hundred dollars. Yeah, noticed that. <laughs> I, should... <laughs> I guess I should be careful. Oh my god, it's so scary. Okay, it's not it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> David hid money in the house. Dope. Oh, this is great. Okay. I'm going to try to eat that. Let's jump on the table. Nope. Oh, how do I eat it? How do I eat it? Ugh, I want to eat it so bad. <laughs> not allowed to eat it. Oh, it looks so good, though. <laughs> <laughs> it has... I feel like I've got it in a weird location. It's not letting me. Oh, I'm so hungry, though. It's a good turn green. Ah. Oh, forgot to put the glider. No worries. All right. Minor bug. Play test. <laughs> it's useful. Uh, I also feel like I don't know why I don't just, like, pick all these up. So, yeah. So he said there's money. Oh, yes. Yes, look at this. Money. <laughs> money. I'm so excited. Oh, I like that. There's money laying around the house. Yeah. <laughs> that's really fun. Oh, look at that. Can't can't get to it, though. All right, let's order some more stuff. I'm excited. I just want more things to happen. Let's get... Okay, so a milkshake. Let's see what else. The Snowy Five. Let's get some Sony Blue here. Ooh, Chili Dog Combo. And then... Okay, I ordered that. We don't need more of these yet. We have some to start, which is cool. And then, cool, yeah, we have to last to that. Yep, we asked for that. This gives us the, the details. Don't throw away any dead bodies. <laughs> I don't think we encountered dead bodies yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so there's that. Oh my gosh, my hunger. This is serious. The hunger takes down sooner. I shouldn't have been messing around. <laughs> well, I guess I'll play play some video games while I wait for the guy. Wait, I forget how to get it. Um, ready. Did you need to buy the game? I forget. I did. I thought I bought it. Did I buy it? Maybe it was in the previous play. Oh wait. Here it is. Okay. I'll put... Oh. I'm really scared. What is going to happen? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, thank goodness. I thought I was going to die. Okay. So we need more. All right. So that's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get a McVomit? A healthy salad. Ah, I'll take a healthy salad. <laughs> Gotta stay healthy while I'm in this scary place. All right. So hunger, I've got that working. Oh my gosh. Okay, why close the door? Um, 
what else was I going to do? I messed up that hamburger thing. I feel like I might not be able to do the, the dark web interaction now, but I do want to try it. So. <laughs> body selling DDT slash dead bodies. <laughs> That's not creepy. All right, we buy bodies dead or alive. Life is a game. Freshly cut flesh head. We buy bodies for one hundred dollars. Once we inspect the meat, the money is yours. Put the body in to receive what you desire. <gasps> okay. Wait, I can't get out of this. Uh oh. What are you oh, no. stuck in there? Help! I really want to go look to the guy! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Maybe I can deactivate that menu so I can go to the guy. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but like, there's something weird with that. It's like, ugh, I don't even know where you have the menu for this. But... Oops. <laughs> So I actually I want to try playing this again because I think that may have happened because I went and messed with that hamburger before <laughs> I before going to the dark web. Um, the thing I don't understand and I have never figured this out about this game is I know I can put a dead body in the portal, but so far I've never seen a dead body in this game. And I've never actually tried to have an interaction with the delivery drivers. So, like, I don't know if it's possible for the, like, delivery driver to die of the coronavirus. Like, I'm curious if that's something that could happen. Um, but let me, let me, uh, let me get in here. Yeah, I was wondering that, too. Yeah. Shoot the bunny rabbit. <laughs> also, one small thing. I'm not sure if this was intentional, if you wanted it to be this way. But... On the dark web, I saw that you like you have to. It's case sensitive. I'm not sure if that's because you don't know how to make it not case sensitive. So this is a little form you could just look at. Um, basically, you could type in like the string variable name and you do dot two lower or dot two upper, and you could just convert the string to all lowercase or all uppercase. So you could just take the input somebody types in, and then just make it lowercase and then compare it to your all lowercase thing and see if they're equal. So that way it doesn't have to be case sensitive. But if you do want it to be case sensitive, that's fine. But I, I just wasn't sure if that's because you weren't sure how to change it. But I, I put a link to a little form you could look at if you wanted to change that. So we... Uh-oh. For some... Oh, okay, it does let me out. All right. So we need to find the rabbit in order to make that interaction happen. I think the rabbit might come if you don't tip. I oh, forget. that's right. That's right. I think that is what it is. And, like, that was last time, a while back, we talked about... Uh, I was tipping I wonder... every time. Yeah. I wonder if anything happens if you do max tip. I've never done that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll get this delivery, and then I'll do zero tip, and then I'll do max tip as well. <laughs> All right, it's dad. It's really creepy when he says delivery. Mmm. Uh, I feel like that might, I don't remember how many hunger it was, <laughs> but pepper. I want to wait actually until my hunger goes down just a bit. Hopefully it doesn't get rotten. All right, let's order, um, let's order a dessert. We won't get the milkshake. Hopefully they all have gliders. Let's try this. Zero tip. There we go. Mmm, delicious. I wonder if there's any other money. You should get your spray belt. Oh ready. my gosh, you're right, Dan. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> get it all. <gasps> there. 
are some. I like it. Is um, it random where the money is? It seems like. Or did it you might pick that one up already? Be, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I there I didn't save, so maybe it's. If if it's random, I like that, David. Good job on that. <laughs> Okay, we didn't get the bunny this time. He says yes. Okay, it is random then. Yep. I like that. That's a good uh, get, uh, decision to make. I'm going to get... Let's see what... Ooh, we can get a muffin. No tip! Because we want <laughs> something scary <laughs> to happen. And my hunger's at 100. And now I'm at 110. Don't stay outside. Oh, the head is gone from over here. Remember, Dan, that there was a head over there? I think it was a little further. Oh, no, wait. What's okay, it? never mind. Yeah. The stream just had to catch up. Yeah, there was a head there. <laughs> 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 All right. So we've got... All right, bunny rabbit. Oh, my gosh! I'm scared. Okay. Wait, I thought I had sprays and masks. Where do they go? Huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to kill it. Oh, wait, but it's just a guy. It's weird. I don't know where that that uh, inventory went. Yeah, you could order a spray bottle. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it before... <laughs> <laughs> But the guy didn't, it didn't come, the rabbit isn't there, so at least I'm okay for now. <laughs> it's so weird. What what happened? I, I Did I mess up? It's like, we, I clicked on it, but this time it's not in, the, in there. So we might have some something weird going on with the inventory. I guess I'll close these. Cool, cool. Okay. It's so creepy. And also, like, it's kind of hard to close the doors. So you end up kind of just, like, leaving this horrifying portal to the outside world just sitting open. It's like, ha! Ah, I'm going to die. So, yeah, I don't... Yeah. Hopefully I get Can it. you see what that thing is, like... If you look out the door a little bit to your right, it looks like there's like something you could see through all the walls, like to out towards the back building. Like over here. If you're if you're looking out the front door. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, like like a little to the right side. Oh, no, too much to the right side. <laughs> just like out the door and a little to like, I don't know, do you not see that? A little to the right. It's like something you can just see through all the walls. It's hard because there's a delay. but <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a delay. So like I think I can tell my feed is behind the audio I'm hearing. Uh, they said it's the 3D text from Green Man. <laughs> what is that? Maybe when somebody comes and chases you, this text over is <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, I do have one bottle of spray, so that's awesome. And I guess I'll continue to just like order and not tip because we still, uh, oops, we still want to see. Ooh, I'll get yogurt. No tip. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just eternally paranoid. <laughs> I guess I should order a mask, too. Just because, like... I don't know. I just didn't get any <laughs> when I went to the bathroom and collected those, so I want more. And... Food app. Donald Instrument is coming. <laughs> I think, I mean, my goal with this playthrough is, oh, if you see someone coughing, close the door. Yeah, 
my goal of this playthrough is I want to see the the bunny again so that I can mm -hmm. put the body in the portal, I guess. <laughs> but we just have to Is the bunny the body, uh, David? Or is there a different body that's different from the bunny? Okay, yeah, so the bunny is how you get the body. Okay. We just have to have it actually, because I think that, the, I think it's randomly generated, so like... Um, yeah, like each time you don't tip is a random chance the bunny comes. I think so. Uh, he didn't... Oh no, that's my mask. It's so creepy. <laughs> I like the different packaging for a not food item. Agree. All right, I got my mask. Oh, nice. I see. I mean, I guess I should just like leave it on and then I'll turn on the spray. Um, unless it says it doesn't last forever. So it may be that when I have it equipped, it's timing out. Yeah, probably. That is, look at that guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, he's coughing on you. Shut like the door. Close the door. <laughs> no, it's like it's a home in on you. It's like a homing missile. Oh shit. <laughs> okay. My mask is. Oh my gosh, he goes through walls. Great. <laughs> There's no escape. <laughs> I literally can't close the door. I'm gonna. Just, Dave like, says spray, spray him. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it goes through the door. <laughs> <laughs> that is not cool. Oh my gosh. Uh oh. That's Gotta get out the spray bottle me. and shoot him. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I see Narelle has joined to the chat. Hey, Narelle, what's up? Um. He's asking, did Natalie's background become a wall? And the answer is that I have a green screen now. So I actually have a green screen behind me. And someday soon, you will see just my head in front of the cast. It's very, very <laughs> exciting. Um, I was actually just testing it out before we go <laughs> any of my bookshelves. It was that horrible coughing guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I haven't gotten my, my upgraded webcam yet, so the green screen doesn't work with my computer webcam. But, I, so we didn't get the rabbit, and I did actually want to um, also check out Elementals and then have time to do a little bit of the animation stuff. Um, but based on what we just saw, Dan, let's actually just do a little bit of a, a talk about this version of the game because Mm -hmm. I know we want to give uh, David feedback. Yeah. Oh, wait, the stream is loading again. But uh, you, you probably already know this because these are the obvious bugs that we just noticed. But uh, make sure you put the collider on the milkshake. Uh, probably not make it so the coffin can go through a wall. Or espe especially the door. If you want it to go through walls, that's fine. But at least with the door. Like that, that should block it. Um, yeah, so definitely do those things. Um, also check on. I'm not sure why Natalie wasn't a didn't have those items in her inventory after she picked it up. I'll try fixing that. Um, and the reason why I bring all these things up is because, like we said, uh, next Monday is like the last week for this pretty much, and then we'll have our next session whenever that is. But we're closing up pretty soon. So I would just focus on fixing what you already have. Because what you already have is already super impressive. And really nice. Like, <laughs> I really like this project. It's good. So if you just polish up the edges, uh, just fix the little things that are broken about it, um, I think you're fine. I don't think you need to really add anything else to this. Just because the time... Uh, like, it's due next Monday. So obviously, you don't have to stop working on it after Monday. But... That's what I would do, at least. Just 
polish and fix what you have already instead of doing anything new. I agree with that. I don't think you need to add anything to this. I think it's awesome. And if you're working on bugs, what I would try to do is like, try to m break the game and see if you can cause bad things to happen. And then as you cause those things to happen, fix it, you know? So like, you know, as you can see the way I play is like, I, I, anytime something bad happens, I'm like, Whoa, you know, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of panic. And those are really useful because when I panic, I do weird shit and, sorry, I do bad things in video games that maybe somebody <laughs> wouldn't normally do. And I think that can be helpful for uh, play testing. So pretend you're me and just ooh, like click around and clicking on the edges of things and sort of acting dumb as a way to turn up useful bugs for you to then smooth and fix the game so that it feels really natural to play it. Yeah, I don't think we ever talked about that before. But, like, figuring out how to break your game is one of the best ways to fix your game and make sure there's no bugs. Uh, like, in the game industry, there's a whole job, uh, I'm sure you know, there's a whole job dedicated to breaking the game so that the developers can fix those bugs. So, I would try to break your game. You, you might not be happy about it because you don't want to break what you have, but you're breaking it for a good reason, and that's to figure out why it's broke or the things you could fix so that your game doesn't break on people when they play it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Nira, I'm, I'm all over the place. I have my camera up there. I, I, didn't, I didn't say this yet, but I, I got a second monitor now. <laughs> I'm Natalie on the left. <laughs> yeah, Natalie on the left side. <laughs> so I keep glancing over there. So that's why I'm, I'm looking all over the place. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Man, it, it's, it's a tough life, like, streaming. It's always like, oh, I have this. And we have, like, all this stuff. Um, I, I, should, I should show uh, Narell and uh, Emmy joined in at some point, but I was... I was telling everybody that, like, I've gotten, like, my professional streaming set up now and including, like, I have one of these things. So <laughs> it's gotten very serious over here because we're going to continue to make these. And it, it never quite works. But, you know, you do your best to be entertaining and to look nice while you're doing it. So we're working on it. <laughs> I'm so glad you got a second monitor. Yeah. My, my mom, cause I graduated, so my mom wanted to get me something. And I'm like... I don't really want anything. And I was like, wait, I do want a monitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's real, right? Like, now, now a life is easy on the cast. And there's a lot of good uses for a second monitor. Yeah. Especially when you're programming. You could have, like, references or whatever on the left side. And then the code on the right side. So, so handy dandy. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that's just reinforcing the fact that you look at references all the time and you don't have it all memorized, right? Yeah. It's, it's impossible to have it all memorized. Even the best developers, they don't have it all memorized. So, like, being a good developer doesn't mean knowing uh, how to code everything. It's knowing how to find the answers and the best, what, like, the best structures to use. But, yeah. Yep. Amen to that. So let's just briefly check out Elementals, um, and then, but do you have clean internet? That no <laughs> what, what does that even mean? Uh, well, what, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have drastically upgraded my internet connection since I started casting. Um, uh, no, D David actually touched Elementals. Yeah, yeah. So actually, let me let me pull this up because I just wanted to show you guys I... Uh, I opened the project earlier just to see if anyone had done anything, and David did a bunch of really great, really great, really great changes. Um, so I see here it says um, we have this. Uh, we had an older push where Neural did a bunch of work on this to improve the menus, and then here we have David saying I added checkpoints, improved the player controller, added a run button, made a fire enemy. Needs new sprites from Snowy Blue. So um, as you guys will see, he created a new enemy that's basically like uh, a tinted sprite uh, from the rock throwing enemy. And then it throws a flame. Um, I had a live system, which is dope. I'm super excited. And then uh, he created a placeable checkpoint that's available in the prefabs. 
Um, and then here, some debugging and the addition of a health power-up. So really excited. Um, I actually opened the fire level just to check out the new enemy and see some of the systems. Um, so I'll play that one just for a moment. And then, David, I'm not sure if you made any meaningful modifications to the forest level, but I'll check that one after if you did. So just let me know if it's worth playing that one. Um, but let's check out this... Uh, this fire level, which we didn't even really look at last time. So, of course, anytime David makes something, it's like, that is the font. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a scary person. All right. So, I'm assuming I, that font is different, right? For lives? That yeah. was never like that. <laughs> I, it, I like it. It. <laughs> it didn't have lives in it. So, these are actually like um, hearts, and lives are different now, I think. So I have one life yeah. in the hearts. So I've got this, and I think, oh, so that gave me another life just now. So see, it says lives too. Yeah. Maybe he had a checkpoint system. So when yeah. you run out of lives, you go back to all the way to the beginning. But Yeah, it must be. And so that, there's our fire enemy. Ah! <laughs> oh, OK. So I took damage there. And we've got like a, I don't think that the, that the um, rock enemies bullets home in on the player. So this is sort of a, a next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it, it accelerates. Those are hard. Oh my gosh. All right. So yeah, I lost <laughs> the life. Ugh, I can't quite get there. Yeah, one thing you could try to do, uh, I'm not sure if you didn't have time or if you weren't sure how to fix this, but if you want to get the sprite to flip depending on which way the player is, you could get your the current uh, transform dot position. Well, you could get the the X position. So get the X uh, the X of the transform dot position of the enemy and compare it to the player's uh, transform dot position X. See if it's less than or greater than the the en enemy's transform dot position dot X. And then whether or not it's less than or greater than, you can do, uh, I think it's transform dot sprite uh, dot x, no, dot flip x, I think. I, 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 I can get a form for you. I think it's transform dot flip dot, uh, dot flip x, and it'll flip the sprite for you. So if it's on the left side, you would just run that function on it, then it would flip the sprite over. Oh. Although I could be wrong about that. I'll, I'll look up a form. I think it's transformed off lip X though. Okay, so we've got a fire monster here, which I think this must be a, a, a stand in for actual um, This is super hard, David. <laughs> <laughs> ah! No lives. All right. I don't know if I can get past that, but I one thing I will say is oh, and by the way, there's background music that I'm hearing uh, as I play this. And the player controller does feel a lot better. The air handling is much better. Ugh, nope. Oh, yes. Press Z to block. Oh, a word, I forgot I can block. Okay, cool. Aha. In fact, that was a fun little area I just navigated. Nice, nice. Wait! Oh no! Oh. oh my god, it's a checkpoint! Yay! <laughs> I'll see what that says. Nothing? Okay. Hey, wait. Is the stream still running? I think it's actually. It says it's. Oh no! Game over screen. It's actually <laughs> on zero right now, so I should probably just wait a minute. Like zero, but. Hmm. Is it? It's it's probably it's just busy. loading right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just give it a second. It says reconnection successful. We should be back now. Okay, let me refresh it. You okay, guys, yeah, I think we're back. You guys hearing us out there? Morales and Nicholas Nally does not have clean internet. My internet is soiled. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, yes, I, I'm getting a little bit of a up and down in my throughput here, but, um, I, you know, while it was buffering there, I, I died <laughs> <laughs> and I got game over screen. Um, but I, you know, the thing I was saying, I think just a few minutes ago is the player controller feels a lot better in this game. Um, I love the addition of the new enemies. Um, the fact that I can block those projectiles is really great. Uh, there's a sound now so that when the fire hits the hit, when the fire hits the shield, it makes a noise, which is awesome because that's, yeah, that's great. You were talking about that uh, with this project, right, Dan? Yeah, just like it could be a particle effect, it could be a noise, preferably both. Just anything to tell the player that something happened, specifically you blocking the attack is really useful information as a player to play the game. Yeah. Uh, that jump I just made, it's just super smooth. Like, I can actually platform this right now, whereas with, with it before, it was like, just this kind of jumping, it was, there was no way. So I'm just really impressed by that. And then I have to remember what it is, yeah. Also, what? David, what I was saying earlier, it's actually sprite renderer not uh, dot flip, not uh, transform dot flip. So when you spawn the uh, fireball, depending on if the player is to the left or right of the enemy, just do transform dot flip x. If it's to the left, and if it's to the right, just you don't even have to do anything. And then that would get the fireball to face the right way. And I do have more lives now, so. This time I should be able to make it a little further. Whoops, just kidding. Okay, don't go down there. <laughs> That's how I died before. Um, nice. Whee. Cool. And then the run is just super nice. I would say, you know, this is probably not something we have time for, but I, if I had my choice, I would probably say that this project would be a good candidate for the the new input system oh my gosh very mario <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a big fire oh my god there's another one <laughs> <All right. laughs> this is fun though there's so much more gameplay than this that's so great like we're not just platforming here there's like enemy stuff and different kinds of challenges that I'm kind of contending with. And one thing that's exciting about this is I feel like I can actually sort of do it. Uh, this time I'm ahead of it. Look at that thing over there. Oh, I'm going to get this star. Oh, no. <laughs> you probably did this on purpose, but the fact that the fireball is the same speed as the player, that's, that's a really good touch to it. And let's just, uh, I'm going to try it one more time and then. Okay. Yeah, I think I have the the same reaction to this one that I do. Oh, damn it. <laughs> With GameStar Mechanic, which is that the, the current control scheme is a little bit, like, not quite intuitive. And I think the main reason for that is just that the way you control the avatars with the arrow keys instead of WASD. And, oh my gosh, that was, that was a completely silly miss. Um, <laughs> I'm just getting, I'm getting distracted. This is why I would never be an actual caster because like talking and doing this at the same time is just like really hard. Oh my gosh, you can use WASD. I wasn't like that before. I'm so excited. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm never going to get back up there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna get there this time. Ah! Checkpoint with four lives. It almost, it does in a way now, it kind of is a little bit like, 
a game star level. But it's sort of like instead of with game star where we're stuck with those certain types of enemies, you can just like make whatever enemies you want, which is cool. Hey. Oh no, I really wanted that heart. <laughs> Another. <laughs> okay, wait, I can come up after it and then the next one. Yes. Okay. Oh, no! <laughs> I, oh, I want those hearts to be more gettable. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, I, in the interest of time, um, because I'm a terrible player, I'm not gonna, I, I'm having a hard time get, getting past that part. But one thing I wanted to say that is just so positive about this is that, like, I'm very engaged in this gameplay now. And I feel like the last version of this game, it was just sort of like, oh my god, I'm just over and over trying to climb up platforms that are very hard to climb up. So, this is a real testament to how adding enemies can really add to the gameplay but then also some of the other things are making it possible to add more difficult enemies such as checkpoints and health have anything yeah. to add dan yeah one thing i would just add is like some of this i'm not sure if it's just this level specifically but with this level specifically i feel like a lot of the time it's not super obvious where you're supposed to go I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, but I see in some places you have like little arrow uh, signs that shows you where you need to go. I think maybe just throwing a few bit uh, more of those around the level would just make it a bit more intuitive. But yeah. I'm not sure if that was an intentional thing you did to make it less intuitive, but that's how I feel about it at least. I feel like there should just be slightly more like showing the player where they need to go. Yeah, I mean, I also think that there is an aspect to this where, and I see this in game star levels too, like when you play Mario, a lot of the sort of basic assumption in Mario is that the level is sort of linear mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. And you can go up and down, but fundamentally you sort of know from the way the game is set up that you're supposed to go from left to right. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't have to be true when you have a 2D platformer. Like, there are certainly 2D platformers where going yeah. up and down is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I, well, I guess to be a bit more specific, there are some times where if you go down, you just die. And then other occasions where you go down, and there's something there. Yeah. Like, ju just from being on top of the platform, you can't tell which one's which. So in order to see which one's which, you just have to go in and hope you don't die. So that, that's that's specifically what I'm referring to. Like, I, I do get that sometimes you do want it to be somewhat ambiguous because you just want the player to explore the level, and that's fine. But in that specific instance where, like, you're not sure if you're going to die if you go into the hole or not, that's where I would fix it at least. Yeah, you know, one thing for that, I'm just thinking about that. That's a perfect way of getting specific about this, Dan. Um, in Mario, there is a possibility of going down, but typically it's by going into one of those green pipes. And so if you see a gap with, with just air, you know that you'll die if you go down there. But then in Mario, when you see a pipe, you're like, oh, I can like kind of descend and go, go lower by entering into this pipe. So that's a visual distinction that shows two types of going down. And you can tell from the visuals which one kills you and which one takes you somewhere else. So it makes me wonder in this game if you could do like this right here. This thing right here is like, oh, if you go down here, you're not going to die because you see this background as though you're going to land in a, like a cave or something. So like. Maybe anytime you need to drop down below the level of the camera to continue the level, always using this background would create that same consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so Norell is saying, when is the play test? So our final, final day for casting is next week on Monday. And of course, we'll check out the games, do some final polishing if necessary, and we will be sharing them with 
the folks at Ed Alliance after that day. So what day is next Monday? Let's actually... Today's the 8th. Uh, yeah. Yes, the 8th. The... Yep. So the 8th is the final... <laughs> Emmy's like, uh-oh! <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, on that note, I did actually want to briefly... It, it, it'll go a, bit, a little bit past 5 because we've been just having fun hanging out here and talking about the games. Um, I wanted to briefly go back to the animation flow that we talked about um, in Emmy's game and uh, just briefly demo how I would set that up in that project. Um, so I'm going to show that on the screen really quick. It should only take me about 10 minutes. And then, Dan, if you see any anything um, that I can clarify or add about setting setting up an animation to do that, mm -hmm. that little spray, um, mm -hmm. You could definitely add on as I do the explanation. Okay. Uh, I did actually notice, though, it, it seems like it might be helpful for, you know, I wish we were in the same room because David has a very similar system in his game, which is the Lysol spray bottle and a blue, uh, a blue bullet shoots out of that. And I was like, oh, if only like David could like give that to Emmy because Emmy's is essentially the same thing. It's just like a, a hand sanitizer like this. And then I, I imagine a blue bullet would shoot out, would shoot out of there. Um, I see Narelle saying, I'm retiring after the play test since I'm older and I'm a senior. Oh, 18 <laughs> years old, retiring. <laughs> Yes, but if you are a senior, of course, there's there's life to be lived after high school, and we are here for you, but we understand if you want to move on to college and work on other things, but you're never too old to do game development. Of course, Dan and I do it, um, and we are older than 18, so <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's check out, let's check this out. Um, yeah, I think I, I left this set up. Let's see if I've still got it set up. I was going to take you through it, but I actually didn't revert. Let's see if it works. Uh, it's not quite there. So say we want to animate this. And again, I'm going to review this for Emmy's benefit. Um, I know David knows how to animate stuff, and Norel also learned. Um, when we did artistic golf. But, you know, just going over this because I know Emmy was not there for that project. And if you guys want to review best practices for doing Unity animations, this should be helpful to you as well. Um, so the idea here is to create like a squeezing animation when you click to shoot this as a weapon. So we showed a little bit of how you would do that last week, which was I, I'm i here in the scene, and this is kind of weird looking, but I, you know, I, I was like zooming in on the game object of the hand sanitizer because I wanted to just animate the top like I did last time. And I actually know this is in here. So I unrolled that 3D object and found just the dispenser. And there it is. So let's see if my animation is still there. I need to remake it. So what I would do here if I want to animate just this piece is when I have it selected, I can click on it. And then in the animation window, I can click Create to make a, a clip, an animation clip. Um, what was I going to say about this? Oh, yeah. Um, you need to have the animation window open to do this. And it's not always automatically open. So you can go to Window, Animation, Animation. And this is the animation window, not the animator. Uh, so if you open and you're like, oh, it has a grid, that means you're in the animator. And that's the wrong window for this. But you will use that window later. Um, so to be clear, you would open the animation window and then you'll see the ability to click create and do a clip. So I clicked create and I'm going to go into Emmy's animation, uh, folder here. 
And I have actually done this once. So Emmy, I'll delete any excess animations I create in this demo process. Um, but again, we'll call this squeeze, right? Because we are you're squeezing it like this. So I click save, and now you know again with this object selected, I've got this this field here to create an animation. And Dan explained this last week, so I'll briefly summarize because I think most people understand how this works. Um, when I click record, I can set the object in different states at different points along the timeline of the animation. And then when you run the animation, it automatically moves it from one state to another. I love Neural's commentary. <laughs> <laughs> animation school. Really though, honestly, like you should take like Neural could really teach animation school, right? Dan, like he makes actual yeah. animated YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, it's funny to me actually because like I feel like Dan, you and I skew a little bit more in the coding and programming direction. Yeah. You know, and we've got some people who are super like visual artist types, like probably know more than I do about this stuff. Yeah, animation's its whole other job. So Yeah. <laughs> there's it a really lot is. there's a lot you could learn about it. Yeah. We also what one thing just to also note real quick. Yep. Uh, like this is different, like obviously this is like separate, but like you can make animations like Blender, or whatever. You could import animations into Unity. Um, so if you ever decide in the future you wanted to do that, that is a thing you can do. You don't have to exclusively use this animation window to make your animations. But I just wanted to point that out. Yep. Yeah, and I think a, a, much, a more professional workflow would be to create animations in an external application and import them. Um, mm -hmm. but it, this is sort of like a quick and dirty way to create animations when you're in the game. Yeah. So like, if you want to just take something that's in there and kind of rotate it or move it, mm -hmm. this is a good way of doing it. But if you want something more complicated that looks fluid and natural and involves rigging, then don't do yeah. community, right? Like if you, if you guys remember in David's game, you guys could, you could open shelves and everything. And that's just an animation that just moves the transform slightly forward. And then when you close it, it just sets it back. So, like you, you, you might not think initially just to make that an animation, but it's a quick and simple way to do it. So, that's another use for the animation window. Like you might not think that's an animation, but it is. Yeah, and you could do it without an animation. Like yeah, you could, you could do, do it through code as well. Transform, but it's, but... it's way simpler just to do it like this. Yeah. So I will do this simple animation here. I've pressed record. And I'm actually going to click up here in this pink strip to move the this uh, vertical white line to about here. And then I'm going to relocate the object into the position I want it to move from this position into. And so what I mean by that is I'm going to go like this. Actually, I only want it to go there so I don't see that blue. And you can see it's created two keyframes. The first keyframe is the original position it was in. And then the keyframe underneath the vertical line is the position it's in now. So if I play the animation now, it's going to go from the original position to the new position. And I showed this last week, but reviewing it again, if you want it to come down and then up smoothly, an easy trick for that is to move this guy out about the same distance. And then I can actually copy the original position keyframe to there. So then it goes down and then it goes back to the original position. Because if you don't do that when the animation loops, it just jumps from the end right here back to the original position. So, do, 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 do. And of course you could tweak this. Um, he was saying last week that this number can be turned down or up to speed up or slow it down, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can also spread things out or squish them together on the timeline. And you can add other things like rotation if you wanna have it be like, but for this, we just want it to go up and down. Mm -hmm. So 
once the animation exists, we would then want to trigger that animation to happen. And you could do that in the animator window. So I already ran through this once, and you'll see the animator that I set up for this object. When I click here, um, oh, actually, no, I created a new one. So I take it back. I'll recreate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe when you make your first animation for an object, it'll by default make a new animator. Yep. So we've got a nice fresh animator here for us to, to set up so that we can then uh, trigger that animation to go off in code. So for this one, I, I just want a way, this tells me what state the object is in as far as the animation goes. And the way I set this up, and Dan, if there's a, a more convenient way of doing this, let me know. Um, but the way I set this one up was I created an actually an empty state, which is essentially like it's just not doing anything. And then I set up transitions to and from that squeezing animation. Mm -hmm. I create a single animator uh, parameter, which is a trigger. And what a trigger does in Unity for animations is when you set the trigger, it goes off once. So, it, you know, we could use other types of parameters. We could use a bool, which is a true or a false, which we would commonly use for something like is grounded or is walking or something like that. Uh, but for this, we just need to trigger it one time. So I would create a trigger here and I'm gonna call this squeezed <laughs> and then I'm going to click on the transition from the empty state which is just blank it's not doing any animation and if I click the plus here it's automatically going to take squeezed and what that means is when I set this trigger in code it's going to transition into that squeeze animation now there's one more thing I need to do here I'm going to first uncheck exit time so that it automatically transitions as soon as I click. And then I'll leave has exit time here because I want the full animation to play before it goes back to doing nothing. But I need to make sure the animation itself is not looping. So I'm going to find this. I can actually, I should be able to click on it there and see it in the project and then click on it and uncheck loop time so that it doesn't get into a state of playing multiple times because I don't want it to go like this every time I click. Okay, so I think I've got everything set up in my animator. I've got my animation. And then the only thing that remains is I need to figure out in this scene where in the script I actually take input from clicking the mouse to shoot the gun. Um, because when I click the mouse to shoot the gun, that's when I want it to go like this. So here's my flow, right? Step one, I create the animation. Step two, I create the animator state that allows me to trigger the animation. <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, it's just such a good thing. Um, and then step three is I actually use this trigger to set the animation in the code for the game. So I've got this all set up. I'm actually, I don't have to look because I did research for this before the cast. Um, I discovered that Emmy has an, a script in here called Gun. And this script is actually where input is taken from the mouse. So let's actually open this. And I believe my, my code is in here from my trial implementation of this. So I'll re-implement it using the animator I just created. Uh, so again, we've got this script in here and all of this stuff is stuff Emmy has already put in the project. We've got a shoot method here. 
that is handling, um, you know, actually shooting the gun. And it looks like it's from a sort of general gun script that Emmy will probably adapt to have a blue bullet or something that looks like hand sanitizer shooting out. And right here, we have the code that takes input. So we have input.get button down fire one. And right here is the code I had actually added uh, when I implemented this last time. Um, I put in a reference to an animator, which is the component on the game object that has access to that grid that I just set up with the transitions between the blank state and the animation of it going like that. So having this public variable in here means I can get a reference to that and interact with that trigger I created. And then right here I do my animator reference and then I do set trigger. And then I just have to put the trigger in here and I call that squeezed, right? I think that's what it was. I think so. I think <laughs> <I'm> squeezed. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if that's what it was. So all you have to do when you've set the animator up correctly is set your animator parameters so that you transition into the animator state that you want to be in. Um, so for example, if we were doing like a walking or idling, we do something like set trigger or sorry, like set bool is walking. And then in the animator, we would say the arrow points to a walking animation when in walking is walking is true. But this one's really easy because the only thing that we have in there is just set trigger squeezed. And when that trigger goes off, it transitions to the squeeze animation and then it hops back to its default state of doing nothing. Okay, so I've got, it's a little confusing because I think I created the animator and the animation twice. Um, but I'm going to pass in my, uh, my object there, which when I drag that in there like that, it automatically finds the animator that was attached to that piece. And if I unroll this here, you'll see um, we've got this animator here. And I believe that's what we're seeing in this. Um, yep, I created it twice. <laughs> so I've got the new one on there. It should work. And what we want to see when I run the game is that I'll click the mouse and we'll see that thing go down and up. So let's see if that happens. Yay, <laughs> it worked. So I'm clicking the mouse. It goes down and up. Boop. And <laughs> so much work for something so small. <laughs> But, but, but that tiny little touch makes it look a lot better. So, <laughs> so much better. I mean, just that's just it's amazing. <laughs> and you can see, actually, this already comes with. Oh, I'm getting it twice. I saw that. Oh, because oh, I don't. Because uh, there there's no, nothing stopping you from shooting while it's doing the animation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's, it's taking that that trigger multiple times. So. Yeah. You know, we could actually probably fix that in the gun script by making sure that the triggering of the animation is included in the shooting timeout. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that script has a timeout on how often you can click to shoot. Mm -hmm. But I probably uh, tr was triggering it outside of that timing out. So there's a little bit of tweaking you can do to make it feel super super satisfying and accurate. Um, but like one of the, the cool things I'm seeing here is like there's already a little particle effect for when the ray cast hits an object that can be shot. Yeah. And what we just need is like a particle effect that goes off at the tip of the hand sanitizer so that we have the sense that it's shooting something. Yeah, I think that would be good. So, Dan, is there anything to add about using animations, like best practices or any tips that I didn't cover? Um, 
just one thing I want to point out, if you could bring the animator window back up. Yeah. Um, I forget if you pointed this out explicitly or not, but just one thing I want you guys to know is it will only go to a state if there is... Like, obviously, you need those arrows, but it also has to be coming from an animation that's currently being run. So if the animation isn't being run, and you have an arrow going somewhere for when an event happens, it won't do that unless that animation is currently being run. So, like right now, by default, a uh, new state is just the default animation she put. Like that, that's the current animation being run. So that's why when she presses the button, it goes from there to squeeze. Let's say you had a different animation there that also go that goes to squeeze for something else. Like you press a different button for it to do something else. You're currently in the default animation, so it won't like be able to do that. Like it, it'll only go to an animation from an animation. Like it's a little hard to explain because I can't have my mouse on the screen. Yeah. Sort of show what I'm showing, but <laughs> I so, so, try. <laughs> but hopefully, I'm explaining it right. So like, it'll only go from a, the animation that's playing. Like the arrows coming out of the animation that's playing are the only ones that are possibly able to be run when you when something happens. Right. Yeah, so right, so yeah, so right now, now zero like can't be run wrong. from new state, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So right as it is right now, it's impossible to go straight from new state to new state zero. You would have to first transition to squeeze, and then from squeeze, you could go to new state zero. So, but there is a workaround to that. You could make it go from any state to new state zero, and then under any condition that's true in any state, it'll just go directly to new state zero. Yep. Yeah, so from there, like you can do that as well. Um, just be sure not to use that too frequently, because then it, some, it sometimes becomes hard to manage if you have too many things happening at the same time, all coming from any state. So just be careful with that. But that's what just would, one thing I wanted to point out. What would be an example of an animation that you would typically put coming from any state? Uh, it's like something you want to override anything else. So, like if you're running and you made like a jump animation, so like you, you want to cut out of the run animation and just go to jump. Or it's like you also have walk animation, you could go from walk to jump instantly. But if you have walking and jumping in any state, that's not going to work out because I would assume that the uh, parameter for walking would be velocity or something. If you use a bool, I guess it doesn't matter. But if, if you're depending on velocity, both are going to be true. So you're going to be walking, your velocity is going to be greater than zero. So it's going to be running the walk animation. And then you press the jump animation, so it's going to override that, go to jump, but then immediately get overrided again by the walk animation because you're still moving more than zero. So that's why you have to be careful with any state, not to have too many things in there. But any state is very helpful, obviously, because you could just override anything else. But you just have to be careful not to put too much in there that you can't keep manage. They can't manage or keep track of. Yep, I think that's a really good way of saying it. And you know, this can get so confusing because it really is bound by those arrows. And sometimes, like what'll happen is you're missing an arrow. And you don't see it because there's so many on there, and you've got like a star, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, one thing also to bring up this will run while you hit play. So if you want to debug, you could have this, you could have the, the uh, game window minimized. And if you open this tab up, it'll show you which animation is currently being played if you want to debug something. So if you, if you want, Natalie, to not click maximize on play and then hit play, uh, like on the game. Yeah. So that, that's very helpful for debugging if you're not sure why an animation isn't running. You can see which animation is currently being play, played. I think I must have the, uh, the wrong one open because it's not showing it. Because <laughs> you don't have animation. two in there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to... Oh, wait, is it because you're not clicked on the object? I actually think that's probably true. Let's check it out now. There we go. Yeah. So new state is running, which is the one where it doesn't do any animation. And then when I click it, it's in squeeze, and now it hops back. 
And you can actually, if you look closely, you can see the animator, the transition between the two states actually lights up. So there's like a little blue line along the arrow and then the second blue line comes to the down arrow when it's done animating. So that can be really helpful to see what the heck is going on yeah, because this totally. gets so confusing, right? Uh, so the other final thing I'll say about this that I re-remembered re when I was setting this up is um, you actually need this down arrow so that it can transition out. Um, otherwise, it can it'll get stuck in that animation, and it's just always there from now on. Yeah, I guess I did, we didn't point that out, but yeah, make sure you put the down arrow because, like, we we sort of just mentioned that it'll go there by default, but not really. <laughs> like, you need the arrow, and then it'll go there by default. Yeah, after exactly. it's done with the trick. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Just, just make sure you put that. <laughs> yeah, you you really have to manually set it up, but. You know, one thing you can do if you're like, I don't want to get into this, is this type of animator setup. Let's get rid of new state because that was just an example. Just this. You know, this type of situation is exactly what you'll find in a game like David's that has an opening door. It'll just have uh, one animation, one animation trigger, and you just reference the animator and set that trigger when you want to uh, make that single animation happen. So. That's really doable, and it's a good way to get into using these so that you don't get overwhelmed with those like big stars of animation states, which is what you would find in um, a player, like an, a player avatar that's animated. So we should wrap it up. <laughs> um, just, just speaking to Emmy directly, Emmy, um, I created duplicates of this, but I will delete the duplicate and just push it with the animation in it so you can check it out. Um, for everybody, what I would love to see is, I would love to see um, a version of Elementals, a version of um, uh, Three Fortnites, and then a version of this unnamed toilet paper game that we can show to folks, even if it's just a demo. You know, this game right here has some, uh, a fair amount of work that I think it could benefit from. So we may just get this to a demo state. Um, but a demo would be fantastic because this is so fun and there's so much potential in it. So I would say this is our final crunch for the, the spring semester and before we get into summer. So now is your chance to really show up and, you know, display your game development skills. And we will be back on Wednesday to talk about some ways to continue polishing these games. And then Monday next week will be the last cast. We'll polish, we'll put together our showcase, and we will talk about what's in store for summer. So, Dan, thank you for being here. I hope you had fun watching me play a bunch of video games. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. Just one last thing I want to say. I already said this about David's game. I'm not sure if you were here when I said it. But for this last week, I would just focus on just fit. Like, don't add anything new, really. <laughs> just make sure what you have works and that. Like, you have, like, a nice cohesive experience. So, like, with Emmy's game, if you don't have the two other weapons working, I would just focus on the one weapon. Make that one experience that, with that one weapon, be as, as good as it could be. Instead of trying to force two other weapons in, and the, the whole game doesn't feel too great, because it wasn't optimized for all three yet. So, yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> just focus on what you have, just polish it up. I wouldn't really try forcing in any last mechanics so I think that's great advice and I mean for for this game um, you know I, I Emmy I know has some menu stuff in here and some uh, like a cutscene and that could be really cool to see um, like there's I, I feel like there's three directions with them one would be like menus and cutscenes so that this has more of a story to it one would be to be like, I want to make it so that you can hit one, two, three, four, five and switch between weapons. And then the other one would be to focus on a system where like when you hit the enemies, points appear on the screen. So I think one of those things, doing one of those would be reasonable. And if you don't pick to do the one with the weapons, 
then I would just leave it, like he said, with just the, the toilet paper, which is obviously well working pretty well. Um, but if you did want to focus on the weapons, you would say, I'm not going to do the cutscenes for right now. I'm just going to create this palette of fun tools I can use to interact with the game and say, I'm going to do uh, systems and HUD later. Yeah. Got the sanitizer yeah. working. Awesome, awesome. So, um, you know, one thing you could do too for this is if you had a, a sort of basic menu uh, working, um, you could actually just link to each scene so that it was like, click here to be a toilet paper warrior, click here to be a hand sanitizer warrior. <laughs> <laughs> that way you wouldn't have to do the integration with the weapons if you didn't have time. Um, yeah, that could work too. If you have all three working, but in separate instances, like we're in different scenes, then yeah, just do different transitions in the menu. Yeah. Instead of accidentally breaking your game, trying to put an inventory or something into the game. Yep, I think that would be a great way to go. So I think that's a, that's a plan. I mean, anything else you guys want to do on Elementals, you know, there is endless amounts of stuff that could happen in that game. Um, I think a particle effect when the bullet hits the shield is something I would still really like to see in there. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, you know, if, if I open that game and I wanted to improve it, I would also play it a bunch and think about the best locations for the health power-ups. But I haven't played the forest, so maybe those have been you not know, in there already. But if not, I would put some in there. All right, Tina, well, we've gone on quite long enough. We did a, a full yeah. <laughs> half here, so <laughs> thanks to everybody for listening and for tuning in. Um, Dan, I think, is going to cast on Wednesday, so tune in yeah. for some fantastic details with him. Um, we'll do some 2D stuff, maybe. Uh, we'll check on Emmy's game, too, and I'll uh, see if I can pass you some tips for Emmy to do based on where she's at by Wednesday. Okay. All right, guys. Everybody have a fantastic uh, evening. We'll see you guys in a couple days right here on the Elon Media Twitch channel. And, you know, I'm glad to hear that Neural is planning on doing game development even after he retires from our studio. <laughs> but everybody keep working on games. We love seeing what you make. And we will talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. Good job, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.